the Orc Warboss in Mega Armor is an absolute beast on the tabletop. So for this project, we're gonna be building and painting this epic model and get it ready to cause absolute havoc on the 40K battlefield. I'm so looking forward to this. Now giving credit where credit is due, this model goes together really nicely. Now while there isn't a huge amount of prep work this needs, it's still gonna need the standard stuff like getting rid of mold lines, etc. But nothing a sanding pad can't fix. It's designed to be put together with zero glue whatsoever, which is rather handy. You can put the whole thing together, see how it works, and then plan your sub-assemblies if you need them or not. Now this one, I'm not gonna put the front plate and the jaw piece on straight away because I wanna get to the head a lot easier, and therefore I can't put the arms on because the axe goes quite across the front plate and I need to be able to fit that in place. And also with the backpack as well, there's not a huge amount of room to get in there as well. So let's take it apart a little bit. And once you have the sub-assemblies you're happy with, you can then glue it in place. Before priming this, I'm gonna try and put a, some texture into the base by using some Humbrol Modder Filler and just sculpt that to how I want it. But also, I'm gonna add a couple of extra little details. With the big shooter on top, there's gonna to be lots of brass or U shell casings flying around. So I'm gonna put a couple of piles of brass or U shell casings and embed that into the putty and that'll stick them in place quite nicely. And also it'll sink down into the putty so it's not kind of just sitting proud on top. Secondly, I'm gonna dive into my bits box and have the stream of shell casings come flying out of the big shooter. Now I've primed the whole thing using an airbrush and a light gray mecha primer from Vallejo. Now as you know, Flying Raven Studios is all about exploring and trying new things out and adapting things to different scenarios. So I'm gonna try a different way of painting orc skin to what I'd normally do. I'm gonna try and adapt the skin painting technique and some of the things I learned from that from the Greek God of War video. So I'm gonna try using a very watered down dark red on all the shadowed areas and then use the Vallejo Model A yellow. It's quite a nice bright yellow, but water it right down and use that on all the highlight areas and all the upper areas. And this will form the base of the skin tones I will try and bring through. So I'm gonna use the two colors I've used quite a lot, but this time I'm gonna put them on the palette, I'm gonna water them right down and to almost a glaze consistency. And then I'm gonna create a gradient from very bright highlight through to very dark shadow. Then use that gradient to build up the colors on the York skin. And in some areas, I'm gonna add in a little, a little bit of flesh tone and a little bit of yellow in there as well. The next bit is I'm gonna try and paint the armor. Now painting black armor is notoriously tricky, especially if you don't want it to look like a black hole. So today I'm gonna to use multiple shades of gray. Now the clan I normally run this guy as is a goth. So the color palette is gonna be red, white, and black. But you could change this out for whatever clan you want. So you, so you could use blue or yellow or whatever. It will still work great. So I don't want everything to be black. So I'm gonna paint this plate here, first of all in a whole red, and then go over that with a lighter fire red, both of them from Vallejo, and then do the same process on the cloth as well. Right, so now I've got the base colors down, I'm then gonna go over it again and add in some uh, lighter gray for some of the highlighted parts, and really darken that gray down for the shadows, and help it to make it look more like 3D objects rather than just a big black blob. Now personally, I like this technique because I like playing light and shadow. But also, if you're a beginner painter, this technique might be a little bit easier as well because you're not having to rely on edge highlighting, which can be quite tricky to pull off. 
Now, one interesting thing on this is that I thought you could only put the head in one position. It turns out that's not the case because when I tried to put the iron jaw on, it didn't actually fit. But also what I found was it covered up a lot of the painting work I've just done. So I decided to cut that bit off and have just the chest piece. Now looking at this, a lot of red and black. So to add a bit more color in, I decided to do some hazard stripes. Now, orcs are not that well known for their health and safety, but my logic was they'd scavenged them from somewhere else. Now a lot of people struggle with doing checks and you can make them as hard or as simple as you like. But the general trick I found is if you're doing black and white checks, for example, start with a base coat of black, then get a very fine brush and a dark gray to mark out where the lines are gonna be. And then fill it in with a darker gray and then build up about a couple of layers of getting lighter and lighter and lighter up to the highlight color you want to use. This means that you can build in the light and shadow of the checks as it goes around a curved surface, for example, but it also means if you make any mistakes, it's not quite as obvious as well. And also with an orc model, having completely dead straight lines, it doesn't look right anyway. So therefore doing things like practicing checks and that sort of thing on an orc model is an ideal way to practice. Now the streaking grime from the Vallejo Environment Acrylic range is an awesome bit of kit and you can make tons of different effects with it. But also as a general kind of unifying wash, it's really good for just making things look grimy and used and generally a bit more grim dark but without going overboard and drowning it in it and just lightly applying it to your metallics for example will take off some of that new shininess and add a bit of age to it Overall, the Games Workshop Warboss in Mega Armor is a really well-designed model. It is a joy to build and to paint, and I've really enjoyed it, so I hope you've liked it too. So if you want to give this project a go for yourself, everything that I've used today, I've put a link down in the description if you want to check it out for yourself, or if you don't have this model yet and you want to give it a go. Likewise, there's a link down in the description for you. And this has been a great project, so I really hope you have fun with your own. Anyway, until the next project, take care of yourself, have fun, bye.